Jared Poland, Fronos photo.com and I hope my levels are right because Steven always tells me I'm yelling but he doesn't tell me I'm yelling and even though he's running the levels sitting over here they're over there this is Raw Talk episode 39 I've gotten my numbers wrong in the past couple weeks Ari corrected me episode 39 is where we are up to and we will be talking about photo news we're going to hit on a bunch of those stories that happened but the biggest news oh yeah before we get into your flying solo questions at the end the biggest news of the week was the Chicago Sun-Times firing all of their photographers, the whole freaking staff, except for three people that stay behind. We're going to dive deep into that one. We're going to save that news story for last because there's a lot of information that we need to talk to talk about with that because yeah. it's just insane what happened. So, Stephen, right before you get to your news, I want to let you know that it's brought to you by Allenscamera.com. A big thank you to those guys for sponsoring me since day one. It's been three years now, and they've supported me, and I continue to support them. So check out allenscamera.com for all of your Nikon, Canon camera needs. They have all of those different lenses, your Sigmas, your Tamrons, your Tokinas, your Rokinons. They got Rokinon lenses. I still have to try those things out, figure out how good they are. Um, We're going to try those out soon. And anything you need, go to allenscamera.com. They're a mom-and-pop store. They'll help you out. Steven, photo news. Uh, researchers in Singapore, they've developed a image sensor made out of graphene that apparently is a thousand times more sensitive at capturing light. Graphene. Graphene, whatever graphene. it's called. Graphene. Did you look it up? Uh, a little bit. Because I got a story about graphene. <laughs> I haven't really looked up what it is, but how? how yeah, what, what how? Is it? Where did it come from? Yeah, what is it? I think it came from outer space near uh, Saturn or Uranus again. Because, I mean, graphene. It's like, what is it? I, I've never heard of graphene before. I don't know if it's on the periodic table. It looked like a clear, translucent sensor that they were showing us. It's kind of insane uh, what they've come up with, but who knows where it came from. I don't think it came from Superman's cape. Maybe (laughs) if you ground it up, maybe it could, or maybe it came from uh, Medichlorians, or maybe it came from Dargarius Targaryen. Definitely that one. Dargarius Targaryen's hair. Yeah. The mother of dragons. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, that was insane. Did you watch this weekend? (laughs) No. You didn't watch? No. Do you watch the show? I don't watch it at all. Oh. I got to get caught up. I heard uh, great things. No, I'm not saying anything. I'm not I'm not a spoilers guy, but if you haven't seen the latest episode of Game of Thrones, they call it the Red Wedding, you need I've never been stunned by an episode ever of any show that had left me going, "Oh, Oh my God! No, <laughs> no, you didn't! Oh, it's insane. Anyway, back to the gray fiend, Stephen. Uh, it's supposed to be better than your traditional CMOS and CCD sensors. Now, the good thing is they're saying that it's going to be uh, ten times. It's going to use ten times less energy and be five times uh, cheaper than your average sensors. But who knows when this is actually going to be a real so thing it's what, when it comes a to market? Thousand times more sensitive to light. A thousand times, it says. Yeah, it's better at capturing light than your average sensor. All I have to say about that is good luck in twenty years if it ever ever comes out. It's the same thing that happened with holographic storage technology. Three hundred gigabytes on a disk never happened. They worked on it forever. But then what happens is if something takes fifteen years to develop, somebody else is developing something else. Exactly. That just takes over. Uh, for it it's just holographic storage never happened uh and it's like blu-ray drives why did apple never put a blu-ray drive burner into it they because they saw beyond that yep they saw right beyond that at least that's what i'm gonna guess at but this would be interesting i'm not gonna i'm not sitting here and panning it it's an amazing thing if they're able to build a sensor like that but then again nikon and canon and whoever builds makes their sensors and fuji they have different technologies that they're all working on we'll see what happens if that ever comes to light that would be great if it did, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, next up, a Japanese company called Amulet. Uh, they released a compact flash card that allows images and video files, pretty much anything, to be backed up instantly using a RAID-style mirroring system built into the CF card. And the cool thing is it's basically split into two partitions. It's a 64 gig, so you have 32 gig and 32 gig, and that separate 32 gig mirrors everything on the initial 32 gigs of memory. So well, you basically yeah. have a backed up hard drive almost in your CF card. So instead of having two CF slots like your pro camera bodies, it's nice to have one card that does it if you have a semi-pro body or even or, you know, more along the... Or you're just storing camera. stuff in general and you want yeah. it stored. I mean, I get it. I, you know what? Thinking about it more, it's really cool the fact that it was, it's a 64 gig card, but it can do the mirroring. But the whole point of backing up a card into a second card is if one card fails. Yeah. So I don't know if it kind of defeats the whole purpose because why do you need RAID on a freaking compact flash card. Well, the thing that I was wondering is that, you know, if, if one goes, is the second one going to... It's all the same card, yeah, but like, I how guess... How are you going to get it? Because it has that separate partition 
it's probably the same as using two CF cards separately. I don't know the, the text yeah, around it. I don't know it, the but. tech stuff around it, but you know, thinking about it again, yes, it's cool that you can either shoot it as a 64 gig straight mm -hmm. or you can split it, partition it, and use RAID and have 32 here and 32, 32 there. I mean, that's... I, I, I don't know. It's an interesting idea. I don't. It's, yeah, it's a good concept. Now, the downside is there is a downside that basically you're, you can shoot at like 60 megabytes a second if you're shooting the full 64 gig, no mirroring. Now, if you are mirroring, that splits pretty much in half. So you're going to be shooting at slower speeds. If you're a fast frame rate kind of guy, it's not going to work for you. Um, and it is rumored to be coming out June 14th. There's no pricing or really hard details yet, but mm -hmm. it's only, what, a couple days away. So. If anybody out there is more educated in how the mirroring works please leave some comments let us know because i'm not going to sit here and tell you that i'm a tech expert when it comes to mirrored and raids and systems like that Me too. so leave us some information let us know what what it is but do it in the proper way don't call us idiots <laughs> we're admitting that we don't know much about raid and all of that just educate us in the mr rogers way educate us please uh, next up a behind the scenes video a really interesting behind the scenes video of national geographics june cover uh, is now online it features photographer his name is Marco Grob. Forgive me if I'm pronouncing that wrong. And he shot James Cameron underwater. And it's James a really Cameron of, uh, he did... Huge director. Well, he did... Avatar, Titanic. A Avatar, Titanic. Um, Jurassic you're forgetting Park, The I Abyss. Think. Did he do Jurassic Park or am I thinking Spielberg? Mm, Spielberg did that. Okay, just the kidding. Abyss, which is a fantastic movie where his fascination of underwater happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a huge underwater guy. So the photographer thought, you know, why not shoot him underwater? Uh, so they got a big tank. A wet, he, they put him in a wetsuit. Uh, they took small shots of him going underwater, take, you know, a few shots, going up, get some breath, go back underwater. Probably took about an hour or so. There's a nice eight minute long in-depth footage of that whole thing happening. And the, the also uh, interesting thing is that they, they took the shot, used a bunch of lighting, and then they composited. So they did a lot of composite. Yeah, they, and a lot of it was composite in the end where they just took an underwater kind of background, put that in the shot, and that's the cover. That's cool. Um, and just the background of Mr. Cameron. Basically, he was shot underwater because of the Titanic. Apparently, he went down there about 20 times while he was filming Titanic. And he also went to the deepest part of the ocean in his submarine. Uh, it's called the Challenger Deep. And it's a voyage considered to be even more dangerous than landing on the moon, which is crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's crazy because one, you're leaving the Earth. I guess in both, you're kind of leaving the Earth, yeah. except you're getting closer. You're going the opposite way. What's fascinating is the fact that we haven't explored everything in this world yeah we've gone out of this world to explore we haven't been able to get to the deepest parts of the ocean mostly and it's just insane the amount of pressure that builds up going down there and if anything goes wrong you're screwed yeah what do we got next uh next up we have uh nasa released a the astronauts photography manual of how to shoot the hasselblad in space yeah, it looked like it was <laughs> from the 50s it looked oh, really well, old yeah i wouldn't say from the 50s i mean like we, the we 80s probably exactly. or something yeah probably something more like the 70s and 80s yeah. being that the 50s we weren't exactly super retro style like we weren't doing fun. a lot of space exploration just yet yeah yeah but uh yeah i mean if you if you ever wanted to shoot the hassie in space that's that's what you're gonna Can check you out imagine when nasa was huge and they had Everything hundreds or thousands and thousands of people working for them the brightest uh, the best and brightest engineers and thinkers of the time and they had a lot of money funding from the government and there was somebody at somewhere in charge of photography writing these manuals and teaching people how to use cameras oh you remember that behind the scenes video we posted not too yeah. long ago of how they did all the cameras and how they photographed the launch there's only like a team of like 15 people they had on the photo team you know I'm and sure they had one like a 60 this. million dollar budget oh yeah and that was insane budget. so what's up next uh speaking of outer space and uh all that kind oh, of stuff the locos kick <laughs> your face the locos kick your uh do you ever watch johnny number five nope you've never watched short circuit nope you've never seen short circuit <laughs> nope you just is the outer because it's like the locos kick because short circuit is this this robot johnny number five okay he's made by this guy who makes him, and then he's like a helping robot, and then he starts to fight crime, and then he breaks out of the of the lab because he can finally be free for a little bit, and he gets involved with this gang, and they're called the Locos, and it's like, the Locos the kick locos. your balls into outer space. I was a kid. I thought it was funny. <laughs> when right. was that, like the early 90s or something? It was probably the late 80s. Yeah. I was probably short like, Circuit 1, Short like two Circuit 2. I don't even <laughs> remember how many there were. Uh, anyway, speaking of outer space and that whole rant, astrophysicists... Uh, stitched together a huge 160 megapixel, not gigapixel, but megapixel. They keep saying megapixel. We've researched yeah. it. I, I questioned this with Steven here, and I, I can't believe it. 
of you take 2200 images and all you get is a megapixel image out of it yeah i mean I, they they took the images basically from the telescope or the uh yeah, the telescope they used. So I'm assuming it must be just a really low resolution, old school telescope. And they took 2,200 images of our closest neighboring galaxies, which is about 200,000 light years away, stitched them together into this 160 megapixel image uh, that you can actually download for free online. It's about 16,000 by 10,000 pixels, and it's about half a gig in TIFF format. So it's pretty interesting to see and How check they out. leave but, it in TIFF format? Seriously, in this yeah. day and age. I'm just going to say either save it as a freaking DNG. I said freaking again. As a freaking DNG or save it as a JPEG. Nobody cares about this TIFF stuff that much. Okay, sorry for anybody out there who cares about TIFF stuff. Don't yell at me. <laughs> Other news, Stephen. Uh, and then moving on, we have Hawthorne Heights, uh, a band that I used to listen to when I was like a teenager. What would you actually. call that? Emo? Uh, emo, for sure. You call that emo? I even do, and I listened to them. I actually have a few of their albums. Back and from back and from like 2004 when they first started hitting it. When I was in the studio with one of the producers, David Bendith was, I think, one of their producers as well mm -hmm. on some of their albums. So yeah, I'm not a Hawthorne Heights guy. It's pretty like, oh my god, I'm gonna go. It's well, the one song was like, uh, slit my throat. No, no, what was it? Like, slit my throat and cut my eyes or something. Or, oh, that's beautiful. It was something like that. They're such a hit. beautiful. I forget song. what it was called. Such or, a beautiful. Song. I might be thinking of a completely different band. So but what I'm is the sure story? Anyway, moving on to the story of how it relates to photo news, uh, they're selling. They they were going to sell warp tour passes, photo passes for 150 bucks. They're at trying each stop. to at each stop. They were trying to do this thing and help out their fans and basically, you know, get them more involved. And thought this would be a great idea. Can I, can I read this? Yeah, you can. Read can it. I read this? Because this over. is a bunch of crap. I agree. Let me read it before I rip on Hawthorne Heights even more. <laughs> okay, this is from Hawthorne Heights website. Are you an aspiring photographer? Come take pictures of us all day at Warp Tour. Now, that sounds great. That would be great, right, Stephen? That would be. In general. But then it's... For free. Well, we'll provide you with the access and experience you need. We will also take your pictures and put them on our Instagram page and give you full credit for oh, it. Oh, yeah. This is a great package for anyone who loves taking pictures, whether it's for a hobby or a professionally. So you're going to charge me 150 bucks. First off, does a band that's touring and that's on the warp tour need to make 150 dollars 20 times over that's no money just do i know modest yahoo did something but he didn't charge yeah he said hey do you want to and i and i don't i don't agree with this at all and, and anyway I, i've seen this happen many times this kind of contest but it's for free it's not like, like it, you charge for it's it. it's like hey come shoot for us you know let us and they didn't say you know give us the rights to the images they weren't thinking when they did this this it's a it is the dumbest idea that's not taking care of your fans. And and then they you want me to read their response here? Yeah, because I have it too. They responded to everybody because it, it, it is a bunch of crap. I'll just read it, and okay. then I'll get into more. Okay. I wanted to say thanks to all our our photographers out there for, sh uh, for sharing their point of view and helping us understand where they are coming from. H.H., H., Hawthorne Heights, <laughs> would never intentionally offend anyone. Of course you would. As we work really hard to stay in contact with our friends and fans, we were really just trying to give a fan a very unique experience. First off, we and know a charge. lot and charge them for it. Uh, a lot of huge bands do this. Bon Jovi charges like five grand and but you can bon meet Jovi. him backstage. Yeah, but do you need to spend five grand? It's like who? It's like Bon Jovi's on the forever going tour now because Live Nation bought the rights to yep. everything and they want to make as much money as they can and rip off their fans. It's a joke. And once you hit that arena style setup, I mean, they charge for everything. Meet and greets, you know, backstage pass, whatever it may be. Yeah, I, I, I it's ridiculous. Having meet and greets, because I, when I was, when I paid attention to Papa Roach for a minute, when I was at one of their shows, mm -hmm. they have a pay meet and greet beforehand. Yeah, they a get lot their, of bands do. They get their picture taken. So they have a photographer on the road who takes these bullshit grip and, and grin pictures. they charge for the pictures too, on top of that after the fact. I mean, which is fine, but... Still, like, if Just you're like, gonna pay for that meet and greet, that should be included. That cost. I can't believe you're charging fans to just meet you uh, to say all hi. this stuff. It's like, you know what? Go meet your fans. Yeah. All right. Let me continue reading. Mm -hmm. Sorry. See the band. Uh, let's see. A unique experience. See the band from stage. Hang out and document it with your camera. Whoa. I think the term internship was inappropriate for where for what we were offering. Uh, it should have just been an experience. And for that, we apologize. We work really hard to keep our prices low and keep our contact with our fans at a constant, whatever that means. Yeah. Once again, sorry for the wording and misunderstanding. Thanks again for showing us your viewpoint. It helps us understand the situation. That doesn't even say that they were wrong in experience. If you want to charge said for we an listened experience. And we, we put, took it down kind of thing. Yeah, if you want to charge for an experience, charge for an experience. Call it 
hey, bring your camera, take some photos, or do what Montes did, which I, again, again, disagree with, where they're like, hey, we're coming to your city. Send us your portfolios. We'll pick one of you to photograph our show, and then you give us your pictures. It's like... But they, he didn't charge for it, correct? No, he didn't charge for it, but they but also I, aren't paying for so it. So you're saying he kept the rights to those images? or They they asked to use them probably for anything they want. Yeah. And the same thing, we don't know what would have happened here, but any band asking for this, that's that's, that's horrible. Yeah. That's horrible. We'll put it on our Instagram Trying and give you, give you credit them. for it. Right. And and But we're charging and you for gonna, it. And we're going to, yeah, charge All you. All right, next, because I'm tired of that. Uh, next up, an even bigger story and a... a Pretty sad story, actually. The Chicago Sun-Times, they wiped out their entire photography staff, about 28 photographers, uh, along with their sister newspapers, too, which is, again, a huge deal. Um, they switched to only freelance photographers. So from now on, they're not going to have a full staff. It's going to be one of those things like, oh, I need someone real quick, run down there, just call up or whoever you know, and or whoever's at the closest place that you're trying to cover, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, the official statement, you want me to read that? I got it. You got it? The Sun-Times business is changing rapidly, and our audience... Our audiences are consistently seeking more video content with their news. We have made great progress in meeting this demand and are focused on bolstering our reporting capabilities with video and other multimedia elements. The Chicago Sun-Times continues to evolve with our digital savvy customers, digitally savvy customers, and as a result, we have had to restructure the way we manage multimedia, including photography, across the network. See, what I, what I don't understand is why didn't they keep half those photographers, or at least, I know they kept three of them. One's a photo editor, one's going to be a video editor, and someone else is going to be something else, but would you even want to stay there anymore? No. I wouldn't. No. It, no. 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 <laughs> no. We should have just that loop hold of on, that. Hold on, hold on. I got this, Steven. You got it. No. So this is it. Then we're going to do the Christian Bale version of these guys getting fired. <laughs> Hi guys, um, all thirty of you are fired. Uh, do you? Th this is what I would have said if I was one of the three that they wanted to stay on. Would you like to stay on, Jared, and be the editor of those three people? No, <laughs> no. Who do you think you are coming in here going la di da di da di? I'm gonna fire every photographer that's here. Stephen, don't give me the levels sign. <laughs> He's like, well, slow down your levels. No, down. anyway, no. It's a bunch of. First off, I wouldn't want to stay. In, who in their right mind would want to stay at a place that's wiping everything out in the in the name of money? Yep. Any photographer, I mean, they fired some some really uh, Pulitzer surprising yeah, Pulitzer huge. Prize winning photographers. I understand that everything needs to adapt with the times. The answer is not educating people. Did I even did I write this down? Uh, in a memo to reporters, editor Craig Newman promised in the coming days and weeks, we will be working with our editorial employees to train and outfit you as much as possible to produce the content we need. <laughs> uh, I stopped myself from cursing there, but that is a, you're going to, uh, hold on. Let me regather my thoughts, Stephen, because I'm trying not to, to, to flip out too much. You have photographers for a reason. They have an eye. They know what angles to capture. They know what they're doing. To try and replace people with an iPhone that does stills and video is not going to work. The dumb, the dumbification of quality of images has already happened. Mm -hmm. People are used to seeing crap. They see crap every day on Facebook. More pictures are taken with the iPhone than anything, and they end up on Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, wherever they go. Not on Google+, Plus because nobody uses it. And... They suck. Not all of them, but the majority of pictures that are being taken today that come from iPhones, majority of, not all, there's some fantastic stuff that that is being captured, yeah. but not for news. How are you going to shoot something that's happening 200 feet away? You're going to shoot it with your iPhone and then crop it later, and then it's going to look like crap? Are people happy with subpar work? And it sounds like yes. It sounds like they don't care. Newspapers are dying. Newspapers are going away. We know that what we just sat here in Philly, you came in today and said that a building collapsed mm -hmm. in the city, which yeah. is 22 blocks from here. We watched it on the news real quick to see what happened. But are you just going to take citizen journalists? It's one thing I can't, you know, and, and expect to get quality work from them. They're snapshots. They're just frames captured with not much thinking, with just putting a camera out there. Just in the moment at the right time kind of thing. Well, yeah, but without any professionalism added. Exactly. Because I'm sure the reporters know that they're not professional photographers. You've seen this happen. When non-photographers try to take pictures, you know what they get. 
They're either standing up and taking a picture of a kid on the ground instead of getting on their level. Just the simple basics are not there. It's not their fault. It's not their fault that they don't know what they're doing. But who wants to work at a newspaper today? Back in the day, that was the place to work. You wanted to be a photographer. You wanted that newspaper job because they sent you on assignments. You got in. You shot big things. How are we doing on time? Uh, we got to restart a few of them, actually, in about a second. So what we've got going on here is that we've got multiple cameras recording, and we only get those 20 minutes until we, start, until we get those black magic things going yeah. so we can do it un, all the way. But newspapers w- w- was where you wanted to be. That is, is flat out the, the dream job. It's not anymore. I don't know anybody that wants to be at a newspaper. The jobs are gone. They don't pay you anything. They'll, they'll have an intern. They'll have a kid out of school come in, shoot for a year, give them 20 grand, which is not enough money to live on, and then do it again next year and get somebody else. It's, it's, it's horrible. Um, and and what it looks like what they're doing now is they're going to try and train reporters on everything. They're going to try and change them, make them do more stuff, and trying to get them into the multimedia aspect, which why not keep the photographers you have that already have that creative eye, change them, teach them, you know. Well, it's money. Yeah. They, they're, but they, still. But what they've done is they're all about making money. Exactly. An investment yeah. group bought this newspaper. Mm-hmm. Investment groups are buying newspapers. Their readerships have dropped. Oh, Nobody yeah. Not gonna say nobody reads them. People read them, but advertisements in there are worthless. Nothing is as is really worth that much in newspapers anymore. It's just not. And it's like saying to a reporter uh, that we're just gonna use citizen journalists. I, I was telling you this earlier. It's like you watch yeah. ABC News and they pay Diane Sawyer to sit there, right? She's the only one that's paid. But then they go and they walk out on the street with somebody with a uh, an iPhone. And they're going to FaceTime over the cell network back into the studio. And it's just a random person on the street going, hi, I'm, I'm so-and-so on the street. I'm reporting here. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Citizen journalism is, a, is, is not that good. Um, sure, it exposes certain things, and that's fine. But when it comes to news stories and vetting things, it's just not the same. It's like on CNN, they have eye reporters. There's nothing more I can't stand than, are you there? There was this major killing, and are you there now? Send us your pictures. It's like, give me a break. Yeah, it's just the and because the, the quality isn't there. Will it ever come back? No. And getting back on to the newspaper topic, the uh, I actually had a bunch of teachers that came from newspapers back in when I was in college, and two of them were the photojournalist teachers. One of them shot for the Philly Inquirer for twenty, thirty years. He saw the direction it was going in, quit while he was ahead. Now the current my other photo- uh, photographer teacher, he still works. I believe the Gloucester County Times, a few other Jersey papers. And still shoots for them, so I can see that ending soon too. I mean that, and uh, he should have been gone. Anybody yeah, I'm that's anything, he's not. but he gets. I mean, I'm shooting in the pit with him at the time. We're shooting shows together. We're shooting uh, events in general. I mean, he's he gets you get access to anywhere, like you said earlier. And uh, on top of that, I had a reporter for my broadcast journalism teacher. Uh, he was a reporter for one of the papers in another state somewhere, and he was there for about 35 years. His passion was newspapers everything newspapers and he eventually quit too this past I think year before they ended up doing this huge layoff at his place so I mean it's just that as a medium is is definitely coming down it's, it's changed yeah and it's going to continue to change I I don't you know it's amazing that they still had 30 photographers on staff yeah that's a ton to begin with a ton of photographers I mean try to keep I understand the freelancer things now I bet you some of them are going to get offered jobs from the same newspaper as freelancers they shouldn't take it you know, you can't just rely on AP and all this or just people to submit images. But that's what we see all the time. The first people on a scene, like when when the uh, airplane, Sully Sullenberger, lands in the Hudson River and an iPhone, original iPhone, takes a picture of the plane in the water. Mm-hmm. And that becomes the cover of every newspaper around the world. It, it's just I don't even know where I was going with that, Stephen. <laughs> I don't I don't really want to go into too much more. I just think it's it's where it's a shame of it's the quality the, where it's well, going is it's what the you're quality. trying to say, I think. Basically, it's the quality that's gone downhill. People have been dumbed down to re- to, to, to see work that d- just take snapshots instead of capturing images. And and that's what people are so used to seeing that when they see... And they're not used to seeing quality work that yeah. much. And when they see it, they go nuts. I feel like it's almost like the rebirth of the digital age where back, you know, say uh, 2000, when all that stuff was really happening, we had the first digital cameras coming out, that kind of stuff, like two, three megapixels, crap quality compared to film. People didn't care because, you know, they just wanted something quick and, and feasible. And then this day and age, now you have the apps and, and stuff on the run, like your iPhone or iPad or whatever it may be, you know, crappy quality again. 
and it's just happening all over again. We, it's just every 10, 20 years, something well, we new comes out. And that the iPhone, you can get nice pictures with it in right in the in proper the, daylight. Exactly. But there's still, whatever, Composition, we're not going to talk that about kind, all yeah. that stuff. And he, basically what it comes down to is they fired everybody except for three people that stayed on. I don't know why they would stay on. The writing's on the wall. Go get a different job. I get it. Um, but... I, they're just going to use freelancers and AP and other people that are yep. out there doing images. So probably AP 99% of the time. Whatever. Like I've had enough of that, Steven. I agree. Is that all you have in news? Uh, that is it for this week's photo news. Brought to you by Allenscamera.com. Don't forget, check them out for all of the Allen's Camera stuff. You can go there. And yeah, I, I had a ranty McRanters in there. Steven, thank you. You're welcome. Go watch my levels, damn it. <laughs> so you can control them when I start yelling through these questions. Because it's time for the flying solo portion. You're going to kill this one or you want me to kill it? You got it. And hopefully that was recording. I'm very upset, Stephen. I am very upset right now. If you couldn't tell, no, no, sit down. La -di -da. Anyway, so let's get on to the flying solo portion where we have your questions that I am going to answer. Uh, I know we're all over the place a little bit, but it just it gets me a little flustered when you think that they just fired those 30 people, which is fine. They should have been out of there a long time ago, in my opinion, getting different gigs. What, Steven? What are you looking at? What are you looking at? Low battery? Is it really? No, it would tell you that it, what's it at? What's it? That's fine. If it dies, keep an eye on it. Then we'll, then we'll come back to it. So, it, how was it? Oh, I must have put a different battery that may not have been charged. Can we pause this whole thing? Or is that too much editing for you to do so we can switch batteries? Yeah, let's let's switch batteries. Yeah, wait, hold on. We'll be right back. I don't want to screw this up. Let's get those batteries changed. Okay, we're back. Didn't want to have the batteries die. For some reason, the battery that I put into the camera wasn't fully charged. Another good thing to keep in mind is that charge the batteries before you use them. I had the other one on the charger, th so that one's at 100%, and we're good to go back into here. Just to see the things we learn when we're here. Uh, let's go. Hey, Jared. I think this was an email that came in first. Hey, Jared, how are you? I've been watching all of your podcasts and really like what you have done with camera angles. It looks really good. Well, thank you. Say thank you to Steven for multiple camera angles. Here is my question, and I'm not sure what to do. I have built a good size following in nature, photography, and portraits. I know personal branding said this. Really? Let me try to read what he wrote here. I know personal branding said this should not and cannot work. Oh, wow. English. But I have found a way to make... It works since I have a passion for both. My issue is last night I did a portrait session with a model. We worked on headshots for her portfolio, and then she said she wanted to do some lingerie shots. Ooh la la. Well, let's see. We pulled off some stunning images, but I am not sure if I should post them on my Facebook page. I am sure my portrait followers would love them, but my nature fans may not. Should I run two pages on Facebook? Should I just cut out portraits since... Since nature is 60% of my income, portraits is 40%. Uh, I hold down a full 40-hour week job, and I think it's time to go full-time in photography, but with only 10 years to go till I reach full pension, it's hard to walk away. So the plan was to build my photo business as far as I can and go full-time when I retire. I work in education, and so some of my portraits are not an ideal reflection on my full-time job. It should not matter, but it does follow me. So basically, to sum that all up, is they took some lingerie photos. A lot of their readers that the guy has likes to see portraits and landscapes. Um, if it's so far away from what you normally capture, then don't put it out there. And if you think it's going to come back and haunt you, then don't put it out there. Put some of the portraits there or put something out there that says, I did this shoot on the side. If you'd like to see it, click here. Let me explain it to you before you go there. If you really want to put them out there, give people the option. Put it there. And if they get pissed off, then screw it. They get pissed off. That's on them. But no, I wouldn't have two separate pages. I think multiple pages becomes way too hard to control and just way too hard to oversee. When you try to oversee multiple pages, then you're going to do a bad job on both. Uh, because that's what happens. You you can't you have to stay hyper focused on one and beat the crap out of it. If forty percent of your work is portraits and sixty percent of it is landscapes, that's very close to the middle. They're almost equal. We know they're not equal, but they're very close. So if you've got a following that looks at both, put up some portraits, 
put up one normal one of her and then say, click here if you'd like to see the lingerie stuff. Don't put it up. Give people the option to go ahead and do that. Um, I know that was a long email, but whatever. Read it. Okay, flying solo portion. We've got Michael Rayburn. Would you re recommend sending your camera in regularly for maintenance and or cleaning? Also, how is the lovely Miss Lil? I bought her a tea or coffee. It was tea once. I enjoyed that little part of your site. Well played, even if it truly did go to her. Well, it did go to her. We do buy her the tea that people did purchase when they did purchase tea on the site. Lil was doing fine. My dad took her over to get her pacemaker examined yesterday it's every six months that they go to the cardiologist and check out her ticker and she outlived her first pacemaker she's on her second pacemaker and everything is perfectly fine she is in perfect shape um she just needs more tlc i think it's very hard to do that and with with uh, the nurses can't exactly do all of that when they're there they they try they talk but i just think there needs to be the more of that personal touch and we try to get over there my brother myself and my dad as often as possible so your question would I recommend sending your camera in for regular cleaning or maintenance? It's not really fully necessary. Every once in a while, if you think that your camera's super dirty uh, and you want to have the sensor professionally cleaned, you can send it back to Nikon, Canon, or whoever your camera manufacturer is, and they can do the cleaning. You can also try to sensor clean it on your own, but there's really not much maintenance that needs to be done. Uh, if there's something wrong, then send it in. If there's not something wrong, then you don't need to send it in just to have them run some maintenance on it. The only things that they do is they send new firmware, and that's what you go and do, and you, and you just take care of the firmware. Caleb J. Forbes, would you rather have one shot, let's see, one shoot that pays more, or give the client a break knowing that they will be, quote-unquote, repeat customers because they love your work? So this is a question I get often, and I have also seen this when I'm out there trying to get my own jobs. Oh, I've got so many photo shoots for you to do in the future. Just do, a, do me a favor on this first one, and I'll take care of you on the next seven. No. No. Steven Levels. No. No. What you will do, I, I tell people this. No. You will not. I will not give you a discount now because you're telling me that you may have more work for me in the future. Let me do a great job on this one. So there's a way to diffuse the situation. And then you know whether or not they were full of shit or not. So, hey, you know, why don't I do this first one at, at the regular price? I'll cut you a break when you come back to me for the next ones after that. We'll, we'll build up a, a long-term relationship there. And then in time, we'll just come up with something better, some better pricing for you. But on this first one, let's get it done. Let's see if you like my work first, and we'll go from there. And then a lot of times, they'll say, well, no, if you're not going to give me a break now, I'm not going to hire you. Well, screw them. Really, seriously, for real, for rizzle, screw them, quote, end quote. They they weren't going to hire you for more jobs. They were just looking for a discount and that's a bunch of crap. And I'm all for doing work and taking care of clients, but they can't expect you to take, to take the, the hit right away. If you're going to give me five or six jobs in a row, or you're going to contract me for five or six jobs and I'm going to give you a bulk price. But if it's the first job in a, in a series that you don't know that there's going to be anything after that, then I don't know that I should be giving you a discount now. That's my answer to that. Screw them. Carl Morrison. Hey, Jared, where do you get all of your best ideas from, and do you have a place where you think of them more? I always get my best ideas when I'm trying to relax, sleep, uh, in work, on my desk, so so then I cannot, uh, so I can't sleep and just after listening to Raw Talk. I listen to them on a loop, and now I have to listen to them all about three, all about their times now. What? What? Wow. Uh, keep up the good work. We'll leave it at that. Cheers, man. I get a lot of good ideas in the shower. It's just where ideas come to mind. I get ideas laying in bed in the morning. I get ideas laying in bed before I go to bed. And I've also gotten into the habit of emailing myself those ideas or stopping what I'm doing and writing them down right away because as you get older, you start to forget stuff. And I hate forgetting things because you have those awesome ideas and you're like, ah, oh, shit, I forgot it. And then in that case, you should have written it down. So I, I, get, I just get these ideas after great movies uh, when I get inspired by really awesome movies or really good TV shows or just something, I feel that's when my brain is kicking the most. And if you find yourself in a funk, then you have to get out of your comfort zone. You just have to shut down. You have to go do something else, and you'll be perfectly fine. But great ideas do happen. Make sure you write them down. Junior Wyatt, do you have a standard rate for bands to use your images, or is it case by case? 
What is your favorite band photo that you took? Uh, favorite band photo that I took? I probably think back to some of the Silver Tide stuff that I did early on when I first started out. Uh, there were some really cool band things that I did backstage. Fisheye, very old school looking things. I had the access to do it. That's one of my favorite shots. Uh, the Matis Yahoo shot that's hanging on my wall back here, then 40 by 60 is one of my favorite shots. But I, I we'll, we'll leave that at that. When it comes to pricing for bands, just know that most of them don't want to pay you at all. So I try to work out some trades. Give me access. I give you maybe an image or two to use on your website. But then if you would like to purchase them, we can negotiate some terms and some usage rights. It's really what they can afford. Hey, what's your budget? The number one question to ask anybody is what is your budget? Get a starting point. Get a ballpark because then you can either decide whether you're in that bu that budget for them or you're not. So that's what it comes down to. So I really don't have set pricing. I have ideas of what I would charge somebody if they asked me what my day rate was and they legitimately were going to pay it, then I would have a day rate for them. But most of the time they don't. They don't have a lot of money. Eric Gizmolowski. Jared, have you ever had to relocate to another state and start fresh? with new clients environment if so do you recommend approaching this in an effective way generating but what can i read this better jared can you read if so how do oh it's not my fault he didn't have the you in there he says how do recommend no wonder why i'm gonna write you you with one of those carrot things that points up from english class that i never did well in if so, how do you recommend approaching this and effectively generating buzz about the new kid in town? I I haven't really had to relocate, but if you go to a new place, just start getting in the circles. Start finding where people hang out. Start getting involved in the local organizations, the local charities, like I've said a million times. It's all about networking and being seen. The more you are seen, the more you get out there, the more people you meet. The more people you meet, the higher your percentage of knowing where jobs are going to come from. Because if you just sit at home hoping that shit's going to happen, it's never going to happen. You have to go out there and make it happen. So if you relocate, the first things I do, maybe find some other photographers and see who they are and what they do and see where they go. Don't say tag along, but, you know, shadow them. Try to see where they go. Where do all the shadow people go? They don't know. Um... So, yeah, I would just get out there, make some phone calls to local organizations, get involved in sporting events, get involved with uh, plays and things like that. Just start meeting the influential people in the neighborhoods and just start networking. Paul Best, I would like to know why you have not got into strobes. I believe that should say, why have you not gotten into strobes, speed lights, wireless triggers, etc.? Seems like you're missing on a huge market of viewers that are still beginners but went the other way first, like studio. I'm going to skip the rest. I'm curious, is it just a lack of interest or is it that you're very comfortable with what you're doing? I think the next challenge should be a studio portrait challenge. Studio Strobes versus speed lights, LOL. Great show, by the way. Thanks for your question, but I've talked about flash photography plenty. We've also finished filming the Fronos Photo Beginner Guide to Flash Photography, which I've seen pretty much the final edits of, and I'm really excited to get that out there. My personal thing is that I do not do a lot of studio work. I have a full studio education. I know how to set up my lights. I know all of the different angles to use. I know all of the reflectors, and I know how to do it. I know how to read my light. I know how to make it work with studio strobes. I know how to make it work with flash. It's just not what I like to go out there and do. And that's not an excuse for not uh, being educated. I'm educated in it, and it's a little harder to teach some of it because I just know how to do it. There's a difference between knowing it like the back of your hand and being able to distill it down, which is what I can do any day of the week when it comes to uh, natural light and shooting concerts. Now, I don't know landscape photography very well, so I can't give you too many tips on that. But we have flash photography coming it is a definitely a huge market that a lot of people want to learn about, and that's why we're there making videos on occasion and coming out with the beginner guide. So thanks for your question, Paul. Uh, Tony Davies, I have a client who wants every shot taken on the day to be emailed online in raw format unedited. Oh, boy. I have told him I don't send out my work like that as... While the job is paid, it's more for the online exposure, and now he's refusing to work with me. I have emailed him asking him why he needs them, 
like that, but now not getting a reply. Would you agree I've done the right thing? Uh, absolutely, you've done the right thing in asking what do you need them for. Nobody, re- People have to understand as photographers that, again, you take a picture and you have to process a picture. Just like back in, back in the day, did we take a roll of film and then give it to the guy and let them develop it? Very rarely. I did that before, but very rarely. Um, you have to tweak your images. So no, you didn't do the wrong thing in asking him why he needs it. You did the right thing. And if he came back with a good explanation on why he needed it, then maybe I would consider it would be a very, very far-fetched out there ex- reason where I would do it. Now I had some, I had a wedding client. I'll tell you this. What was that, Stephen? Did you hear knocking? Was it the ice machine? I don't think it was the ice machine. I think there could be ghosts. How's the time on this one? Thumbs up? You sure? You positive? Anyway, I did a wedding once where the client so happened to be into photography. He was an amateur photographer. He had his 5D Mark II at the time, and he had a bunch of good glass. And he goes, can I get the raw files? And I was like, eh. But they were already getting the JPEGs full res exported, and I still went through and I edited everything. And then, I, and you know what? I said, supply me the hard drive. I'll put them on there, and I'll give it back with everything on it. Because why do I need to argue? I am making three, four thousand dollars on their job. I'm never going to use their raw files. And you have to pick and choose the battles that you fight. Are you going to be that guy that says, no, 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 I never give away my negatives or raw files. Or are you going to be the person that thinks common sense, common, common sensically, I just made that up. And that's a secret word, common sensically. Uh, or are you going to be the guy that goes, you know what? I'm doing a job that's paying me $4,000. Do I want to make $0 or do I want to make $4,000? So yes, you can have the raw files. Sometimes it's not worth that fight and it, it wasn't a big deal. Um, so yeah, you've done the right thing. Angel Gasparini, if you, would have to, if you would have to learn a second language, which language would you choose? I would probably go with Spanish. Steven, what would you go with? Quickly, quickly. Cantonese? German, Schnell, nine, nine. Oh, speaking of German, when I was in Germany uh, and we were staying at the Ibis uh, budget, budget Ibis, Adam and I, and I needed more soap, but the lady didn't speak English and I didn't have any more soap to show her that I needed. Actually, I did. I finally pulled it out and she's like, so, you know, I pointed to it. So the next day I asked somebody, I'm like, how do I say soap in German? And they're like, Zypher. And something like that, Zypher. So then the next day I saw her, I was like, Zypher. And she's like, here, have some soap. But she didn't say, here, have some soap. She was like, sometimes I'm some Zypher. You know, because it's such a lovely language. Um, it sounds so angry. But I'd like to, I'd learn Spanish because it seems like a lot of people speak Spanish. It's one of those three big ones in the world. Uh, Dylan Paul Jones. Where's the furthest from home that you've ever been for a photo shoot? I didn't get on. Oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm reading my own notes again. I was in Israel. I was photographing as the Maccabi Games official photographer. One of the, there were four of us total. And I had to stay with one of them who was a doctor. And he just picked up like a D3 and he sprayed and prayed. He shot more files than anybody ever could have imagined. Um, I didn't get along with most of the well, not most, one of the people, the, the guy who hired me for the gig, I didn't really get along with because when he's running the show and he's not really a good photographer, it kind of upsets me. Um, it just really upset, upsetted me. I was upset, Stephen, very upset because, uh, you know, I got my ways. I got my mindset. I like how I like to do my things. And when they're asking for certain things a certain way and it just didn't make sense, uh, whatever. We don't need to go into that. The furthest I've ever shot was Israel. Next question. Keith Hopman, do you ever drink anything besides water? I do drink other things besides water. Steven, how much time are we at? So where did you come up with two and a half minutes, Steven? Oh, no. I meant I meant 40. I just want to see where we're at. So that's interesting. I drink lemonade, water. I like throwback Pepsi because it's so much better for you with the all-natural sugar. Uh, and then I like Mexican Coke from the bar, but I think we should do a drunk show one day. Maybe. 
Steven, what do you think that would be like? I don't drink that much, so I'm a lightweight. If I just sat here with some vodka and uh, lemonade and popcorn, because I have my popcorn machine, it could be a little crazy. I might, I might be yelling quite a bit in that episode if I was drunk or maybe falling over laughing. I don't know. Um, next question, Paul Walker. What is with the half mannequin bodies in the background of your videos? I probably watched about 90% of your videos, but must have missed the one where you explained why and where you got them from. Well, they are mannequins, and they were used, one for me to first tackle, uh, the other mannequin that you can probably see in the, yeah, you can see him in the background from the GoPro angle. Uh, I used to call Mr. JPEG, but then they, then I got the, I used them for taking the photos of the t-shirts as they came in. And then I would put them in the store. And then when we got female t-shirts, I needed a female mannequin. So Ari went down to the mannequin store, which is only about 15 minutes from here. There is literally a place that is the mannequin store. And they had a used mannequin and she's got great boobs and she's got a great body. She's just missing heads, arms, and legs. She's got half a butt, half a tuchus. Uh, and we put uh, women's shirts on them and shot them. So that's the story of that. Ricardo Guagalacamati. Googly Laminati. If you woke up tomorrow with your camera equipment knowledge on how to use it but blank of your name, brand, and customer base, how would you secure work for the following week? Would you start a blog, advertise on Facebook, could uh, a cold call venues? I think this goes back to that question earlier. If you relocated to a new place and nobody knew you, I would get out into the public to find out who the, the movers and shakers are in the community. And once I got in touch with them, then I would find out what um, who the right people are. So starting a blog that's not good for getting a job next week people have to find you that's not a good option getting out there and meeting people movers and shakers is what i would have to do and what i would recommend to you thomas bakar or in baker baker jared i'm a sport what steven what are you laughing at what are you laughing at yeah well, it says B-A-K-K-E-R. Is that Bakar or Baker? I, th I came up with Thomas Bakar B because it's Bakar. 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 Jared, I'm a professional sports photographer spelled S-P-O-R-T-S-F-O-T-O-G-R-A-P-H-E-R. That is not how you spell sports photographer. It is two words. Sports pho, P-H-O, photographer. In a, pr in a prof sports team soccer. Oh, boy. What do you think about pricing? At the moment, I get no money for it. I think it's okay for a 17 years old. What is your opinion? And I just read it the way that it said. It's okay. Look, you don't have to get paid for everything. Yes, you are young. You're getting experience. But you're meeting people. If you are working for a professional sports team and you are shaking hands with the owners and athletes. They make money. They're worth money. You try to work your way into jobs that make you money. If it's the difference between shooting and not shooting, then I'll probably continue to do it for free if I can get something else out of it. If I can get them to give me a free advertisement in their magazine, in the free advertisement in their uh, program. Programs! Programs! Get your programs! Five dollars! Peanuts! Cracker Jacks! And crab fries. Um, yeah, I would continue to do the job, but try to get something out of it if it's not money. Next. Dan, Dam, D-A-M Chambers. Maybe he spelled his name wrong. How could he spell his name wrong in Facebook? Is your name really Dam Chambers, D-A-M? How do you calculate the exposure when using bulb mode? You pray. You guess. You use your best judgment when you hold up. For those of you who don't know what bulb mode is, if you set your camera to B, as long as your finger is held down on the shutter button, the, the mirror stays open. The film is still being exposed. As soon as you take your finger off, then it's, then it's not. Uh, you guess. And being that it's digital, you have a better chance of getting it right because you can shoot one and then see what happens. It's like guess the shutter speed. Uh, and you can Oh, you know what's cool, Steven? When you shoot in bulb, it actually records the time that the shutter was open. So we could play we could play guess the shutter speed backwards and say hold it for a 20th of a second. Hold it for a second and see who gets the closest. That is a cool game show option. I like that idea. Who can get closest to the right second? Okay, Phil Mayer, M E Y E R. 
photographed a baseball game for the st- from the stands on the first baseline row one and seat one. Good for you. I used a 1.7 teleconverter on a 70 to 200 2.8, and the faces were soft. Was it due to the teleconverter? Most shots were F9, 1600 ISO, and six uh, and 16. One six. What? Can you write this properly next time? ISO and 1600 shutter speed on the Nikon D700. First off, we can tell that you're not shooting in manual. The lens should not go to F9 with a 1.7 times converter. Uh, a, a lens at 2.8 with a 1.4 converter goes to F4, and then with a 2. Point, a two time converter, it would have gone to 5.6. So it's somewhere around one, uh, a 4.5 with a 1.7 crop factor. You just have your settings wrong. Um, something is automatically being set here. If you were in aperture priority, the aperture would only let you drop it to the lowest point of, say, 4.5 because it will already take into consideration that you're losing light uh, uh, because you have on the teleconverter. But F9 is not where it should be. The only way it would be at F9 is if you were in in like automatic modes and it set it to F9 automatically, which sounds about right because if you've ever gone into program mode, it likes to shoot at 6.3 for some reason. Am I right, Steven? You've noticed that too, right? So it usually finds that middle ground of 6.3. So if you were at 6.3, another stop, you're at like eight over eight, and then you're not at 11, you're at nine. So that is what I think you may have been in P mode for professional. So double check that. Armando Marcial. I know, I know it is really important. Okay, let me correct it. I know it's really important to calibrate your monitor. How do you, Jared, in parentheses, calibrate your monitor? Also, what if the client sees your pictures different because their monitor is not calibrated? The precise reason why I don't calibrate my monitor. That's one of the reasons. Uh, I don't really, I don't calibrate my monitor. I'm using a Mac, and some people say they're pre-calibrated, which I don't think they're fully perfect. If... uh, I don't calibrate. Steven, do you calibrate your monitor? No. Steven said, no. No. He doesn't calibrate his monitor. Look, there's a plenty of color calibration devices out there. If you're doing a lot of printing and you want to get it right, say from Adorama Picks, you get their profiles and you match their profile with your color calibrated screen so that what you see on your screen is what you get from the print. That is where color calibration is uber duper fantastically important. Now, I've gotten it damn close with Adorama Pix. I've gotten it damn close with my own uh, Canon Pixima Pro 10 that sits on my desk without calibrating my monitor. But what you bring up is the precise reason why most pe- why it doesn't matter. If you're sending them to clients and they have the worst eight-year-old screen with the biggest pink tinge on it, then they're going to see the wrong color anyway. So that is why one of the reasons I don't do it. David Gutierrez photo. Is this where you post? Is this where we post our questions? Yes. Edgar David. Let's say you don't have much work. How much will you be willing to char uh, change your style if it means you get work? Like if someone told you we need this portrait, but you need to retouch the hell out of them, or we need this picture, but do not boomify them. That is a fantastic question, and it's one of those questions that I struggled with for the longest time. Oh, for the longest time, Billy Joel. Um, look, it comes down to, is it personal work or is it for somebody else? When it's your own personal work, you can follow your own beliefs, a.k.a. I don't crop my own personal work, but I realistically know that if I submit a picture to a magazine, they're going to crop it. So I, it's not like I would tell them, no, they can't use my photo if they crop it. There's certain times when it's my work and somebody's buying it, it's like, you cannot crop my work. Do not crop it. Talk to me first. And then I would have to, to verify whether I agree with that or I don't. So it's just like me sending the guy the raw files for his wedding. I chose to do that because it was more important to keep the job than to lose it and argue over something that is meaningless. They don't give a shit. They just wanted the raw files. So in this case, I would change my style if I needed those jobs. If it was something that you did it for the money, which you shouldn't always do, but again, money is good to have and get it, get paid to do certain photos, I would change. If somebody's like, we need to crop this, all right, and I will let you in on a little secret here. When it comes to wedding photos and wedding albums, there are square prints. There are times I will go into, uh, <laughs> I'm going to say it, Stephen. 
get ready. Get your ears open. I'm going to say this now and here. I consider weddings not really my personal work. So when it comes to putting an album together, if I need to creatively crop something to make it work in their album, then that is what I'm going to do. Steven, don't look at me like that. Don't you ever look at me. No, no. Stop looking at me like that. Oh, la di da di da because I know that it's about the client and what they look, they're looking for. They don't care about my personal beliefs of not cropping. That's my own personal belief when it comes to my own personal work. But the wedding stuff is for them. That is their photos. And I want to, if, if I need to make something a square or somebody shot something loose or I just want to fill the frame more, then I go ahead and I do it there for weddings only. That is my answer to that. Ah. Uh. Damon Stenke, Steinke, do you think in, the de- in this day and age of photography that there's still a need for Nikon to have the, their NPS program? That's the same thing of saying, does Canon need to have their CPS program? Absolutely. Any, you must not be a member, not putting you down, but if you knew, then you wouldn't ask that question, right, Stephen? Because what happens, I can call NPS right now. And I can say, NPS, do you have a 200 F2 available? Do you have a D4 available? I need them for a shoot because I have a very important job and one of my cameras is in getting cleaned or one. Of, I just need an extra one. They're not there to be to giving to give you backups. They are there to to give you the gear that you need to make the job right that makes you a professional. So if you need to try out a 402.8 before you buy it, they will let you do that. They will send it to you. They you I pay for shipping to me, I pay for shipping back, but they give me the gear, they let you use it and that's really important. It's like saying, look, borrow lenses lets anybody borrow lenses. So maybe that's the professional service for regular folks is that you can rent from somebody. Basically, we're renting it from them just for the cost of shipping. Uh, So I absolutely think that there is a need still for the Nikon professional services and Canon professional services. It's how we get to use gear that we don't already have, and it's how they get pros to buy more gear. And also, it's just good customer service. It's all about customer service. The better the customer service, the more loyal people are, the more likely they're going to stay around. Speaking of customer service, I got my car wash yesterday, Stephen, and I was very upset. I went to their website on my phone because I was out and about, and I couldn't print out the coupon. It was a coupon to get $8 off. What are you laughing at? What are you laughing at? Yeah, so it said $8 off, and... And I'm like, all right, well, maybe they will just allow me to use it. I understand that it says you need to print it out. I get that. But it was also, I get there, and there's a long line. And then my dad tells me, because I called him, and he's like, oh, it's Tuesday. That's Senior Citizens Tuesday at the, at the, at the uh, car wash where it's 50% off for seniors. I'm not a senior. I wasn't looking for 50% off. But I get to the cash register, and he's like, I can't do anything for you. I can't do anything. I, I, let me get the boss. The boss really like came out with an attitude. I wasn't saying I wasn't going to pay for my car wash with full price. I was just, and I also signed up for their text alert, but that took 40 minutes. It says it takes 40 minutes to get you your coupon, which ended up being 50% off, which I already left by the time that happened. But the guy's like worst customer service ever. I understand it says, you know, print it out. I also understand that it's senior Tuesday where you're giving everybody 50% off, which means you have a button on your machine to go ahead and take 50% off. I wasn't looking for that. I was looking for $8 off, which wasn't 50% off. And they're like, no, we can't do it. And he's like, just pay the damn bill. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I run a business. I run, I know how customer service works. I said, and he already walked away. And I just sat there and was like, look, in a situation like this, you get asked things all the time. It's like, you know what? Normally I wouldn't, normally I can't do it. But for this one time, I see that you have it on your phone. You live in the city. You're nowhere near a printer. Let me just, we'll do it this time. Next time, please go ahead and print it out and we'll have no problem doing it. But as a one-time thing here, we'll give you that discount. Thank you for coming in. We really appreciate your business. Instead of that, it was the opposite. Just pay your damn bill. It was just like, yeah, I understand that it says print out only, but you know how many times people ask you for things and you just say, you know, in like Gary V once told a story and this is all good stuff. So I hope you didn't click off yet. And anybody who clicked off yet, Click, you've already clicked off, so I don't need to tell you what. Um, Gary V was telling a story about he was he was bagging ice in the wine store before he was the manager, and the manager they 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 had a coupon that a guy brought in for like a dollar off, 
He bought four bottles the week before and then got a coupon for a dollar off those bottles, came back in and asked the manager for if he would honor the coupon. And what do you think the manager said, Stephen? No, he said no. He said no. He said no. I would not honor your coupon. But he he said no for four dollars. The guy just spent twenty some thirty some dollars. Was coming back in to get a coupon, and then he said, "You know what? I just will go shop somewhere else." And that left an impression on Gary. And he's just like, the cost of acquisition of a new customer is far greater than that four dollars you would have given the guy for for keeping his business and making him happy. Anything you can do within reason to make your customers happy in whatever you do, whether it's photography or business, you own a store, anything that you can do that's added value or that that you go out of your way to make better, people remember that. So you lost a customer over $4. Somebody who spends hundreds and hundreds of dollars in your store, is it worth losing the $4? It's like having expired coupons and you go to the store and they're like, you know what? We'll honor it. This time, next time, just make sure that it's, it's in the proper date. But you know what? We'll do that. That's how you run a freaking business. And that is where we're going to leave it off this week on Raw Talk episode 39. I want to thank Alan's camera. Steven, thank you for your news and, and watching my levels. I hope you guys enjoyed this week. Uh, we've got some new shows that we're recording, hopefully getting the guests to come back in. And we're going to keep this rocking and rolling because I know a lot of you people like to download these things and listen to them at work. So again, if you subscribe on iTunes, we put the podcast up at 12 noon on Mondays, Eastern Standard Time. We do not release the video till sometime Monday night or Tuesday for the rest of the world or even post them on the site. So if you want to listen to it first, and sometimes we do contests and, and you can win if you're listening early, um, then you want to go ahead and subscribe on iTunes because you'll get it delivered to you right away and, and be the first to hear it. So that really is all I have for this week's Raw Talk episode number 39. 39. And there you have it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.